thank you very much for being here. Um, I am Kiwi, I am product manager for Keycard. I'm going to give a quick introduction uh, to what is Keycard, and then Andrea and Michele, which are two of the lead developers for Keycard, are going to be in a hands-on approach to Keycard. So uh, this is supposed to be a very hands-on workshop. You can get your computer ready. Um, we have key cards for you, we have readers, we are less readers than key cards, so if you are not, we distributed 14 readers to plug to your laptop. Uh, if there's not enough, you can group, maybe. Um, <coughs> so, um, quick introduction to what is key card, very quickly, and then we can get onto the hands on the workshop. So, key card. Um, so this is key card. Very simply put, it's a big 32 hierarchical deterministic hardware wallet on a smart card. So it's a framework that we've developed. It's open source and it's running on Java card. Um, what it's not, it's not a simple NFC tag um, that you that you would use uh, as a QR code or as an encrypted um, uh, data that you get through NFC. It's actually um, a small computer. Um, Keycard is an applet that runs on there. It's open source, so you can check it, you can audit it, you can tweak it every way you want for your own application. And it runs on very standard hardware. Actually, all of you here you have a Java card on yourself right now, most probably, because uh, every Visa cards are running on Java card, and your SIM cards in your phones are Java cards too. So the hardware are very common. Um, there are a lot of manufacturers for this, um, and um, one of the consequences is that it's relatively uh, inexpensive since there are millions of uh, smart cards produced, and it has a very high level of physical security, meaning it would be very expensive uh, physically to get private keys out of this uh, smart card. The key card uh, we are providing here, and the one we produce in Status, that we've integrated with our Status client, has two types of interfaces. It's both contactless with NFC, so that it can integrate with either Android or iOS mobile applications. Um, and uh, it's also got a physical interface like that, meaning you can, with the USB readers that we've distributed, connect it to a desktop application. So, that's Keycard. What can you build with Keycard? To sum it up uh, quite quickly, Keycard app applet, um, it's a hardware wallet. So you can either generate a secret within the card, or you can import a secret. Let's say this secret is a seed, then you can make any derivation following BIP32 on this seed within the card, and then the card is doing the, trans the, the sign signature, ECDSS signature of uh, the transaction that is being passed to the card. So your application is passing, once it's set up, and the secrets are here, they never leave the card, and uh, your application is passing the transaction, actually it's the hash of the transaction, and the card is doing the signature and passing to the application the signature. That's what it does. Why does it have added value uh, to use for security, obviously? Uh, it's air gapped, it's offline, that's an hardware wallet, your private keys never leave. Um, and within your application, it provides, the other thing is provide ownership of the private keys to the end user. This is tangible, the private keys are here and nowhere else, so it really puts the user in responsibility of his keys. Uh, and in terms of application, obviously, we can think about a lot of things. Uh, most of you are hardware wallets. Uh, if you've got a mobile hardware wallet or a desktop hardware wallet, uh, sorry, a, 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 a mobile or desktop wallet, this can be used to store the keys. For identity systems, uh, this card is very convenient uh, to hold the identity of the, of the user or for any authentication uh, system. So that's what's key card and what you can build with it. Um, so we'd like this to be hands-on. Um, so for those who just arrived, you can get some key cards. Uh, and 
to connect them to your to your uh, PC, uh, you need some USB readers. We've already distributed some, uh, and if they are not enough, maybe you can group uh, if possible. We need the key card. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so you can, I mean, if you, if you read once, sorry, if you read once, yeah, you need to plug it in a reader. Uh, we distributed about 15 readers. Uh, who has a reader? Maybe you can make small groups of three or four people. Maybe we can, yeah, in the room, group of these. Anyone know the Wi-Fi? Yeah, we do. The Wi-Fi password? We can give away this one. We can give away this Wi-Fi password. Is the Wi-Fi working? Yeah, I think it's a normal Java, generic Java. Yeah, I don't know about the Yeah, we can type it. Yeah, we can type it. Yeah, we can type it. Yeah, we can you might need two things. So key cards with got tons of them, everyone can get one. Then uh, I mean let's make small groups with USB readers. Uh, who is without a USB reader? Okay. There is still one. Is there one here? It's bigger than the other one. There's one more here if you like one. Grab one over there. Yes. Okay. Over here. Yes, you have one. You have one. Cool. Okay, let's try to find one for over there. I think I don't have enough. We don't have enough. Yeah, I see. Thank you. I do you know how is the Wi-Fi working? Because we need no. need to download the two two things. Sorry. Okay. I can check, but it's a few. Okay. I'm going to get this already now. Yeah, because it's a void. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Now it's a bit. Okay. So why? Over there, do you want to... So the CLI is around 6 megabytes. And the... Yeah, I'm going to get this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So are you able to download? Uh, this is the two release of the first two links. Because I don't know if it's always the one to extend. Well, the one to continue and the other one to download. Hello. So, why the, the, the card is in use? So, you have already explained that the card was a very high level of hardware security, which means this chip are made only for the purpose of storing secret information and computing signal, basically, or encryption between them. But basically to verify identity things like that. So company that make this chip they invest everything in exploring all possible attack ways and mitigating the attack such a way that attacking a car costs millions of dollars. Uh, the keys never leave the card, so you, when you are signing with the with the actual wallet, the signature is computed on the card. So it is actually a small computer, not very powerful, but very optimized for this task. And uh, the communication between the card 
and the, uh, the device that you're using is encrypted. This is uh, a protocol that we implemented above the standard communication protocol because uh, the, the use case of this kind of cards is usually to use with trusted devices like point of sales or port. Uh, but in our case, you can use it with any device. So we have a layer of encryption on top which protects from many in the, uh, in the middle attacks, even if they are quite hard to carry out, this kind of attacks can be covered in any way. Uh, and it also prevents uh, random devices uh, sending commands to the card. I mean, it has a pin, for example, and uh, if you send three times the wrong pin, uh, it blocks the card. It would be inconvenient if anybody would block your card. So if you don't if you are not authorized to even send commands, you cannot block the card at all. So what are, what are the steps to work on the key card? So there is the applet installation. This one is done in factory. When, so when we ship a, a blue key card that we show, the applet is already installed. When the applet is installed, it doesn't have any secret. It doesn't have a pin, it doesn't have a cube, and it doesn't have the pairing code which is needed for the encrypted channel. Uh, so it's really blank. And then there is the initialization phase where you you don't still create a wallet, you just define your own pin, group, and pairing code within this, this way. So we don't have to handle the problem of uh, the pin to be shipped in a separate envelope or, or a scratch code which can be, at the end, it can be read. You do it yourself on your, on your device and your safe. Then there is the key generation step, and this can happen in different ways, because of course we want people to be able to import uh, the AP39 seed phrase or, or already existing uh, keys. Uh, you can load the key, uh, a seed, uh, binary seed, or you can even load uh, just the key pair, uh, even with the chain code or without. Uh, and then you can start signing transaction. Signing transaction and, and uh, uh, is something that you can do only after you authorize with a PIN. So this means the card has a PIN like a regular ATM card. Uh, when you want to sign, you need to, to insert the PIN uh, and uh, the, the card uh, receives the hash of the transaction, not the entire transaction because it doesn't make, it's not very efficient uh, first. And second, the card doesn't have a screen to show you the, the value, so it doesn't make even sense. And then you get uh, the signature back, and the and the, the device you use can submit uh, this uh, to the net. So that's basically it. So maybe Andrea, yeah, for some now. Okay, so as we said, the keycard is a dual interface. So. Yeah, so um, you can use it with NFC, and it's maybe the, the best way to use it, because we, you can use it with your mobile, uh, implement an application with uh, iOS or Android, and then uh, it's easy, like you, you just need to tap, I think you need to like, right? Uh, you just need to tap, and, uh, and it's easy to, to use. <coughs> uh, otherwise, it's also contact, so we distribute now the the USB reader, and you can just use it also in uh, with a laptop. And uh, so uh, we release like the uh, Java, so for Android uh, SDK some months ago already. Uh, in the last mo uh, weeks, we developed the, the iOS, uh, so Swift uh, SDK, because with the newest uh, uh, iOS 13, it's, uh, it's possible like to send the APDU. Hello. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, so, so before uh, iOS 13, it was impossible to send uh, all kinds of uh, APDU, so all the comments that, we, that you needed, and uh, now it's possible. So uh, I think the first application that was really um, support the kicker is Gnosis, that was released yesterday, uh, Gnosis Safe, and it's integrating like the uh, kicker as a two-factor authentication, so it's cool. And, and Thank you, thanks to them because of the, the head with the development. And uh, <coughs> so now if you want to try something, maybe doing something mobile, 
will be uh, longer because we need to like, uh, develop something for mobile, compile it and uh, deploy it to the, to, to the phone. So uh, we also developed this uh, Kikar CLI so we can basically try to use it and, uh, and see basically all the commands that, that you can use to interact with the keycards from scratch to signing the signature and uh, signing the transaction and then basically the, the same concept you can apply them to, uh, to a mobile application so I don't know if you was able to download these two things that I was saying before so the first one so this is the um, keycard applet <coughs> and it's basically the software that is running on the keycard and uh, it's open source, it's here, uh, status IM uh, slash status keycard and then the CLI says it's written in Go and uh, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Yeah. And this one is the CLI of saying uh, it's written Go, but you can really, uh, you can download the release here. And then I was saying if you use uh, Linux, you need to install and run the uh, PCSC D uh, demo, uh, which is basically which allows you to interact with the protocol. And uh, nothing. So if you now <coughs> uh, use the USB and in uh, use the, the card and um, you can run let's say here but one spare USB reader if someone wants to type the comments <laughs> do you all have a key card? there are more here if you want to have two, three someone wants to play around with the, the comments live and the, with the key card and the reader Okay, so if you have the CSC demo running and you install the um, and you downloaded the keycard uh, command in CLI, you can just run keycard info and you basically uh, know like something about the card that you inserted into the, the reader. So there are a few um, yeah, things that you can see here. So. It, can, it says if the applet is already installed, uh, if, it's, if it's initialized, there are the things that we will see later, but it's not installed yet. So we can use all the keycard install tool uh, uh, command, or we can use also, I'm sorry, I will increase this. Okay, so you can use the keycard um, shell command and you can just pipe or direct the, the, uh, a list of comments and in this specific case uh, there's a list of like <coughs> APDU comments that uh, are needed to, to uh, install the applet. So when you receive the key card, so the blue key card that you can buy, uh, the applet is already installed, so you don't need to do this. But if you are developing uh, something for the key card and you want to you know, upgrade or reinstall the applet or I don't know, do something else. Uh, you need this kind of uh, commands so that you can reinstall everything. And, uh, and another thing is that uh, in a smart card you can also uh, install multiple instances of the keycard. So it means that you can have like, I don't know, five different HD wallets, each one with a different master key, and then uh, you just select a different one when you, when you are interacting. So in this case, if I if I run this, uh, I also put like the bug here, and you can see all the APDU commands that are sent. So APDU commands are these bytes uh, that are basically sent to the, the cards. Uh, each one is a set of like class bytes, uh, uh, instruction bytes, some parameters, and some data. So in this case, it's long because it's like uploading the the applet, and after this. Uh, you basically have uh, the smart card in the same state uh, of the one that you receive when, when you buy one. So it's installed but not initialized, which, which means that it's ready to be used, uh, but it doesn't have the, the master key yet. So if we run again, 
like the kicker default that we uh, run before. So now it says that it's installed. I don't know if you can see. Um, so now it's installed. Uh, it's not initialized, meaning there's no. Uh, it's not ready to be paired, paired with a device. Uh, there's no key, so there's no UAD, and uh, there's just a, a key that it's used like for to the secure channel. So after this, um, are you trying something? So it, it, tell me if it's not working or if you just stop to see. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, when you when you receive the card, it's not ready to. Uh, I mean, it's ready to be used, but you need to uh, initialize it. And this means basically creating the secrets. So the secrets that you that you use to to use it later. So in this case, uh, so the first one is the um, uh, the pin. The second one is the book, and the uh, third one is the pairing password. Uh, so in this case, if you run basically with the same shell scripts, whatever I'm going to to run this. Ah. Uh, all these scripts are in the, uh, in the Kika CSA uh, repository, so if you want to use exactly the same in, uh, not in assets, but in shared comments, you, you, need all the, you, you have all the scripts. Uh, there's one thing that I did in this segment, um, that here in the install script, so the first one, that you need to install the updates, uh, it's still loading, so maybe we can just open it here. Um, okay, so this one has a hard-coded like, path to the card, so to the applet uh, downloaded before, so you need to or change it or put it into the, to the real path. Uh, so what is this? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now I'm writing the second script. So this one is basically uh, so key card set. So in here, if I go back to the install, uh, you can see that uh, there are some commands that are starting with GP, another with key card. So GP is like the uh, means global platform, and it's this uh, standard uh, used to communicate with. I see. It's the card manager application on the card, so it's the one that allows installing removing applets from the card, and it's independent from uh, Kicker. It's uh, implemented in the card directly. Yeah, so basically, it's, it's a standard. Uh, it's a standard like, uh, way to install set applets. of commands in general to uh, interact with smart cards. And in this case, we use this because we we, we are not uh, interacting yet with the Kicker applet. And then we have some key cards, uh, so starting with key cards uh, commands that are basically just like replacing the, the uh, you know, hex uh, bytes uh, code that, that you send. And in this case, like we are uh, selecting the, the, the applet, so the key card applet. So as we said, we can have like the key card applet and then other applet, like the visa applet or something else, something else, something else custom. And, uh, and then we, we set like the secrets, so we can just for testing uh, using this, otherwise you can just uh, not specify and then they are uh, generated random. And then kick out in it, uh, which is initializing. So it's basically saying, okay, so starting from now, these are the, the secrets and uh, you can use this card only if you know the secret and if you pair with the pairing password and uh, you need to uh, use the pin for any uh, signature, for example, and, and anything like this. So, okay, so after this, uh, so the keycard can be paired uh, with uh, five devices, five body uh, So it means that every time you want to um, interact with the keycard, you need to pair and to, to be able to start the pairing uh, comments, you need to know the, the pairing, uh, this one, so the pairing um, password. And after that, you can call pair. 
then opening a secure channel, and then doing something. So this script is basically not doing anything. So it's pairing, opening the secure channel, and then unpairing. And I'm, I'm doing this unpaired just because otherwise I, I basically use one of the slots for the pairing, and then every time you use another one, and after five, uh, that cannot be paired anymore. And then I'm just using verify pin because um, for some comments, you need to verify the pin, for example, before signing a transaction, or in general, for example, here before I'm pairing. So, of course, when you you don't need to pair every time you you use the key card. Um, for example, when you when you have a, a mobile application, you just pair the first time, and then um, with the pairing the session, you are creating a key, and that key you can store it in the phone, and you use it every time. You, you connect the next time like, you connect to the card. So it's basically once for each device that you want to pair. And uh, yeah, so these are other um, scripts that you can run. So for example, this one is the number four. So I can run this. And it's just getting the status of the, of the card. <coughs> The same thing that we had before, so if it's installed, if it's initialized and everything, and then you can see the pairing key, which is the one that we used to interact after the pairing session, and then the pin retry, uh, so it, every time you, so you can, you can uh, put the wrong pin three times, otherwise then you need to use the book to reinitialize the pin and, uh, and everything. So if we, um, so at this point, um, the, the key card is initialized, uh, but it doesn't have a master key. So there's another comment uh, that you use, which is generate key. And, uh, and this one is basically generating the key uh, inside the card, and then, which is basically the master key. Uh, there are other ways to, to have like a master key in the card. Um, you can generate it on the car, card, or you can upload it. Or you can upload, I think, the indexes of a BAP 39 uh, uh, mnemonic uh, phrase. And then the card is stored in the, in, the, in the card, and then you can start using it. So, yeah, do you have any questions? Or also, like, if you have problems, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm curious about, <coughs> is there a key signing to implement in hardware? I would assume so. Yeah. Signing, yes. Yes, incrementally now. So adding a new type of signature, so, uh, the it would be a, a problem because it's it's really it's not even it's not even at the OS level that is implemented, but there is a special part of the chip which does the computation. Yeah, we so you have a chip with the supporting this curve, with some curve, yes, because that was a problem. I think. Yes, yes, oh, that's cool. that means the chip support. This is a standard now. Like every chip has this with some curve in hardware. Uh, all the chips on the market, uh, they support uh, the curves defined in the Java car specification, uh -huh. and so they define uh, the FP curves, <coughs> like the SEC, the oh, okay. cool. for Ethereum, yes. Because cool. on the policy, you don't have it, you know, in the, on Android and iOS. That's yeah. the biggest problem, yes, because you cannot use the secure element for creating keys. <laughs> Ah, okay. Mobile. Okay. That, that sucks. Must yeah, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So don't change the. That, the that's why your your has a has a point. Yes, because the uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's related. Does it support VLS? Um, no, because of the. I know. It, it depends because, I mean. Do, does it need the pairing for signing, or is it only to verify like the? It, it, it needs. Okay, so it is. Uh, yeah. So it might be a pro. I mean, it depends the way the way you use it. Because, um, well, it depends. So. One day. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about these uh, other Java cards that you mentioned. Are they locked somehow? Would I program on my SIM card in the same way? You can. Um, Andrea showed before these uh, global platform commands. Something that uh, didn't put accent is that there is uh, uh, also a sort of secure channel, and it has a key. 
the issuer knows this key, but you don't. So when they sell you the card, you don't know the, the key. So you cannot. But if you could, the card is actually not locked. So if you knew the key, you could really load or even remove the SIM app, the SIM app from the card. Yeah, in fact, the, the one that we distributed now, uh, so they have the test keys, so that they are known. Um, the, the, the one blue that, we, that you can buy, they have a different key, but it's still known. I mean, it's like the key card keys. But then, the, I mean, for the final release, maybe we would uh, generate, I don't know, random key, so that it's not possible to like restore or you know, flash it or so, things like that. Or everybody will get their own key, so I wouldn't be able to mess with somebody else. That's yeah, the idea, the idea that after initialization you change uh, the, these keys on your device. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys experimented with just some unique uh, no, but I think they were doing something. I don't remember. No, I was looking more into, into uh, implementing because actually the, the UB key uses the same protocol, so the same communication protocol. So actually, an implementation could be done for Java card, but uh, porting this to the UB key hardware with it is something we need to test well. Another question is, for example, if I have an Estonian ID card for personal yeah, yeah. signing key from a, a part government, do you know if it's possible somebody have somebody release software so to put it on this card? I don't know. So if you if you can use the same applet on on that card, uh, I don't know if it's like something open so so at least that you can download. And as far as I know, you can't extract the private key from the Estonian citizenship card. So, like the government knows it, but you can't get it yeah. from the chip. Yeah, so the others can run, but you cannot port the, the, the keys. So, is there uh, a TSM that holds? It is a secure element. It's, uh, so it's basically, it's what is used for TSM uh, for trust computing. And, uh, how to manage all these applets? The applets are managed by the by the chips or by the by the module itself. Uh, and the I, I SDK, uh, who will master this key? The, the, the key, is, as we said, the key is uh, fixed, so it's actually the user knows it. Uh, but then the user can change it, so they can change the, the key to load applets so that nobody else can uh, delete or install applets on their charts. So we don't want to, to manage this centrally on our side, we want that the user has the ability to load other applets and to, to what, they, what they want with the card. Like this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any other question? <laughs> so, uh, okay. So now uh, we can generate the key. So we can still use the share commands and use the script number five and it's basically do, doing the same that we did before so it's selecting the applets uh, setting the secrets to be able to pair pairing opening the secure channel verifying the pin the pin so that because uh, it's it's like regenerating the, the key if it's already there in this case it was empty so it's generating the key and then pairing so from this point, uh, you can start like using it. You can start like signing transactions, signing data, and everything. So, one point is that uh, the um, the card actually has a true random number generator on board. So, generating the keys on card is uh, really secure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, please are there. Yeah. Michael, for your. Where does the entry for? 
It's in it's in the chip. It's so certified to generate real energy. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know it's a secret. <laughs> okay, so now um, yeah, so now there's the Kickerstein uh, command, and it's basically accepting like a uh, 32 bytes of uh, data, and uh, the script is like sending an empty byte. And uh, it's doing the same, the usual select, uh, pairing, uh, opening the secure channel, and verify the pin because it's required before signing, and then unpairing. So if I use it and then do this, so the output is, is giving me like the, the signature. Yeah. And uh, the signature, so it's like probably <coughs> uh, plus 27 or something. <coughs> Um, well, then there's a sign message, which is actually in, in, uh, implemented in a CLI, but it's not really uh, on, the, on the SDK. And then there's another concept about the pinless path. So, um, so as we as we saw now, um, every time you want to uh, interact with the keycard, you need to know um, the pairing password. So for the first time you, you use it with a device, you can generate like the pairing key. And then every time you want to sign um, some data, uh, you need to verify your PIN. So, so that it's always something that you, that you need to, to know. So it's, you, you are only you know, the owner of the card and the only one that you can use it. So in general, you, you only use the, uh, the key card with your own uh, trusted device. Uh, we can uh, set a specific path of the HD wallet that can be used uh, with untrusted device. So it's for many things. So you can be creative. Uh, so it can be like just to open the door here, so that you don't expose any any key that you are actually using for for your with your other wallet, uh, but you are still uh, authenticating and doing like this. Or you can do something. Uh, uh, something like paying uh, on a point of sale and uh, with the risk of uh, with all the risk that you can have, but you, you know, if you get an event or something like this, you can have just a few tokens on that path and you can just tap it on it and uh, trust it the device business. So the way you do it is like there is this uh, set pinless path command and uh, to use it you need to of course pairing and uh, verify your pin and then you, you just pass like the path of uh, the wallets that you want to use, and after this, so uh, so I can execute it so that it's obviously a different tool of three. Okay, okay, so after this, <coughs> we we set which which path we can uh, use with the uh, previous path. And uh, basically, what we can do is signing with the PLS path. So as you can see here, so the script is really two commands. So one is just selecting, and the other one is like um, signing something. And uh, yeah, so the example is like using it for for these other things. And uh, and nothing. Then there's another uh, simple example about the about removing the key. And uh, an example that is basically doing everything. And uh, yeah, so this one is like uh, just a, so if you are developing a, a mobile application that interacts with the, the, the keycard, the CLI can be useful so that you can easily like you know restore the, or initialize or change the path and everything. And uh, but then the main SDKs are basically the the one for Android and the one for iOS, and they, they basically have the same uh, uh, common sets. And uh, inside the, the uh, status keycard Java, there's a so there's the package in general for Java and um, Android, and then there's there's a demo app that you can really compile like and try in Android if you have Android here. Or there's another one for iOS, and uh, 
you can see here. So it's basically very similar. <coughs> so the way it works is like a lot of Java code. And then you basically initialize a common set, and then uh, you basically have the same common that we had before uh, as a method of the common set, basically. So selecting, and then, um, let's see, if there's something that it's really same. So like pairing, and then um, getting the in retro account, so it, it's it's very easy to to uh, to read, and uh, it's basically so in this demo, it's basically implementing everything you you need to have, so it, it's easy like, to copy and uh, use it. Yeah, go. Sorry, you mentioned iOS. What is the status of iOS uh, NFC support? Is it? Yeah. So let me also find the the. Yeah, so in uh, so before um, I think I have it somewhere here. Yeah. I'm gonna write this okay. This one. Okay, so we're saying uh, so with the uh, so with iOS 13, which is the new one, uh, they implemented everything. So they opened more API uh, in the NFC core. So you can basically send and receive all the APDUs that okay. we saw, so, so you can have a full interaction. And before that, uh, it was like only reading the yeah. NDEF tag. So it was only for, you know, NFC tags, yeah. and <laughs> just storage. Mm -hmm. and, uh, let's see here, There's here a Kika Swift SDK, and then the, there's an example application in the Gnosis um, repository. And uh, the common set is basically the same, so you can, you can check it, and uh, it's basically implementing all the comments in the same way. And now, I don't know, I mean, we, we, we saw everything, so if you have questions or if you want to play with. Uh, card with the CLI, or if you want to, I don't know, install the, the um, demo app for uh, Android and iOS and try to uh, compile and deploy it, and uh, we're here to help, and if you have more questions. I think I would just pick up. Uh, so I missed the beginning of the presentation, so about that, if it was already mentioned, but uh, overall, I would uh, a status key card uh, compared to something like a Trezor one in security. <laughs> so, uh, in general, compared to the other hardware wallets, uh, um, so the key card has a very secure storage. It's the, same, it's the same secure, more or less the same secure element like the ledger. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have the additional part controlling the screen and the buttons because it doesn't have the screen <laughs> and buttons. Um, so it's a very secure storage. It is uh, inexpensive. That's and it is a standard hardware. So we, the po one of the points is that you we don't have a product to sell and uh, that is no that is. Um, Closed, so because I'm giving, even if it's open source with schematics, you still are not going to make it yourself. But these cards, you can find them. You see, we bought these white cards and we installed the applet. So there can be many issues of this. There can be endless combinations with different features, multiple applets on the same card. So from a security point of view, it's the same base, basic of what is in a ledger, with the same secure element. Of course, you don't have a screen and you don't have buttons, so it's a compromise. You have to trust the device. We solve this in part uh, by uh, implementing this uh, secure channel protocol, which 
at least allows you to pair with a specific device that you want to use, up to five, uh, so you don't have random devices interacting with the card. Mm -hmm. The card uh, has uh, um, the advantage of uh, being uh, very practical because every phone has an NFC reader, so compared to USB solutions, they can be also used, but it's not as straightforward. And uh, it can be used also with um, USB card readers, which are also um, quite common to find, actually. So it is, uh, it's, it's a com it's, uh, meant to be convenient and uh, secure and uh, affordable. So it's, that's, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> and also for onboarding, because it's like something uh, cheap that you can buy and you know, yeah, it's give to, to five it. of your friends. Uh, so I mean, it's for the physics. So sorry, like something quite on the physics, on the security. So there's the software and the hardware itself. <coughs> the software is fully open source, so it's uh, I mean, it can be audited. And the hardware, which is the secure elements, is um, I mean, these Java cards are usually certified. I mean, the hardware pro products, these <coughs> ones are from NXP, for instance. From who? NXP. NXP. Yeah, okay. which is uh, one of the main suppliers of Java cards. Um, they are. They follow a certification program. This one is EAL, EAL5 Plus certified. So that follows a, a, a list of tests to test the hardware security. How hard it is with a, a microscope, uh, with a side channels attacks to get the secrets out. So the, the hardware price per themselves are qualified in the <coughs> hardware security also. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You say you're expensive. How expensive? How oh, expensive how is a car? Yes, how much? So it, it really yes. depends. I mean, like we were saying at the beginning, these um, Java cards are produced by millions. Yeah. I mean, they are in every phone, <laughs> every Visa, Visa card. Yeah. So they can be really inexpensive when you do volumes. I mean, okay. the, the question of the price is more depending on your relationship with your supplier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But roughly, I mean, these things, when you manufacture a couple of thousands, you're, you're a couple of dollars. I mean, you're below five dollars for uh, such a hardware. Okay. It's, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, is it possible to source different form factors? Yeah, I mean, then usually there are these form factors, or they can be just a simple yeah. SIM card without the antenna yeah. for phones, but some suppliers do rings, yeah. um, some do things that you can attach to physical objects. Yeah. Um, then it's up to the, 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 the guys that manufacture this. If, if I can add uh, to this, so this, the chip that is here behind, this is from one manufacturer, and the body of the car with the antenna is made by another okay. manufacturer. So this can be even embedded in other <coughs> electronic devices. Okay, got it. Last question, I was late. Can I still have a reader? Finish <laughs> <laughs> uh, them, I don't think that there are more. Thank you. It's a key. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yes, so I, still have a question. Yeah, I was just going to ask about manufacturers and like whether or not you can like where where can I source these and like what kind of volumes. So, so there are, so there are so different actors. First, you need to find a chipset provider, yeah. the guys that manufacture the chip per, per se. So um, they are not such a big number. This is NXP, uh, Infineon. Infineon, uh, uh, NXP, 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 Samsung. Yeah, so the, maybe, and, and then you need to find a manufacturer that's gonna do the process that they described that buys this chipset and then put them in the uh, physical card. And this type of supplier, there are hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds, I mean, uh, our self manufacturer with one in Europe, in, Europe uh, in France actually, but there are tons of guys that know how to create a card. <laughs> and then the other thing you can consider is the level of security, depending on what you download at the factory level in the car, the level of security you want in the factory. What we choose ourselves when we manufacture that is that there's not any secret in the car. I mean, um, and so um, we don't want to rely on the security of the manufacturer on the process. The cars are initialized with the, with the, with the phone. Cool. <coughs> Do you intend to uh, publish any application to direct the card from the phone? Yes, um, so it's the, st the status client is uh, implementing now the for Kika.
and there is also so not status is from us of course and then there are third party application which also integrates so Gnosis uh, safe and uh, Wallet. Do you know any? I think this one are released yeah. and then there are people writing new stuff. Yeah. I still have a question. Uh, the the color of the system. Uh, the cost. Do you know the cost divided by? The cost of the operating system of the car? Uh, the car operating uh, system are developed by, by you? No, by no. The operating system is uh, developed by NXP. Oh, I don't know. Maybe NXP buys it from uh, <laughs> some, someone else, but they are shipped already on the chip. Open source or not? No, no, no. The, this, there is this thing. So the Java card applet that we wrote is fully open source. And it can be installed on any Java card, on any Java card OS platform. But the specification of the chips are under NDA, and we don't even have them. Uh, we don't. You don't need it to use it. Uh, and uh, to write uh, so all OS, uh, they need the specifications, and so they are all closed source by default. I mean, there, there is no other way. Can you use the input without the secure channel? No, no, because uh, if you, uh, we have thought that uh, it's better to make pinless interaction with the point of sale, because the point of sale is untrusted. So if you enter your pin, you are giving uh, a secret uh, to an untrusted device. So it's better to have a separate wallet which has little funds and you know it's cash money. And we are thinking about ways on how to mitigate. Uh, uh, fraud, risk, and things like this, but at least you don't give any secret. Because giving a pin, maybe you are giving also a pattern to your other pins, and that's risky. <coughs> are there any such chips on the market, or where in the world, that are open source down to the lowest level? Unfortunately not. I, I, I'm uh, having a close look at uh, the RISC V initiative because uh, actually this thing is an ARM microcontroller with a secure storage and uh, a few other hardware accelerator for uh, cryptography. The cool thing what makes this secure, why an ARM chip is not secure and this one is, is the topology of the transistor is randomized. So if you it's obfuscated, let's say it so. So if you take a, a, a microscope and you open uh, whatever, you the cap, uh, a, a microcontroller, you can see exactly, okay, this is the RAM, this is the ROM. You open this one and you don't see anything. <laughs> so it's, so I'm looking at the risk v initiative because it could be used at the basis, but there is a lot of uh, development cost to bring the same level of security. So to make this really a secure element. Nice, thank you. Can you report the key? Yes. So you can import a key, but you cannot extract the key. Correct. Even with password, can you do a backup? Even with password. Uh, there is a small, in, uh, you can never export the, the master key. Uh, but uh, that's the master key generated on the card, right? Yes. Yeah. But uh, for your Ethereum key, can you export it? No, but if you have the seed phrase, you already have a backup. Yeah, you have a seed phrase outside of the card that you know, defines the purpose. But you have an export function in the API. For yes, I wanted to explain it. The export function allows exporting public keys and uh, private keys, but only under a specific subtree. So yeah. it's a subtree which we have defined, we wrote the IAP. Uh, which should not be used to store any asset, but can be used for authentication or encryption in things off the blockchain. Yeah, but with this you could derive some restoration scheme, yes, if you can take that, doesn't matter. We are thinking of... wallet and you can export from one, something that creates your key with some other piece of data. There is, this there is, is possible, for sure. There is a duplication system, but I think we are going to remove it. Because actually the better way uh, is probably to use a multi-sig wallet where you can just change yeah, the yeah. card associated with it. It's safe, it's, it's really like a, you can just replace the key, you always have two, one yeah. somewhere and yes. one the card. And 
great idea. That's what we are going to do. Finish.